Draw Every Day with JJK. Hey everyone, welcome back to my studio. I'm Jared and I'm so pleased to be welcomed into your studios as well. Maybe it's your kitchen table, maybe it's the back porch, uh, maybe you're hiding in a closet so that your siblings don't drive you crazy. Wherever you are, I appreciate you being here with me and having me in your places and, and all over. It's a while like Istanbul and uh, Bristol, England and, and uh, Greece and oh gosh, all over the world now people are watching. So uh, please uh, keep sending me artwork. Grownups can send me artwork. We'll play it at the end of the show. And also, you know, maybe let me know where you're watching from and I'll continue to give shout outs. So today is Friday, which means we are brainstorming. And I asked, uh, oh, you might be wondering, why is Jarrett so dressed up today? Uh, sometimes it just feels nice to get dressed up. You know, whenever I'm speaking at schools or conferences, I do get dressed up. Uh, and earlier today, I was on a Zoom conference, so I had to be all dressed up. And I thought, why not just make it formal Friday? Everyone in the house, let's get all dressed up and get dressed nicely and feel nicely. And there we go. So I asked the grownups on social media, if they could please share with me some ideas of a sea creature and an emotion for that sea creature. So my book, Peanut Butter and Jellyfish, we'll be reading it later today. I'm gonna to read to you all of the different ideas people threw out there. Okay, ready? There's a lot. I'm gonna read them as quickly as I can. Otter, narwhal, sea otter, angelfish, blue whale, snobbish, narwhal, um, Let's see, what else do we have? Curious Frog, Stubborn, Kraken. Um, Marco says Ticklish, oh, that's a good one. Uh, cleaner Shrimp, uh, that's what they're called, okay. Uh, please uh, let me know where I can pick up some Cleaner Shrimp. Our house is a mess right now. Uh, octopus and Gleeful, another octopus. Um, somebody said Personality Trait, okay. Um, let's see, Hyperactive Sea Turtle from the Houghton family. Uh, thoughtful merman, uh, seahorse, swordfish, uh, five-year-old says happy fish. Julie nominates a uh, barrel-eyed fish. It's a fish with a see-through head. Um, Julie, thank you uh, for the nightmares. Uh, squid, studious, octopus, uh, turtle. Uh, El Frankie suggests electric eel. Kate says dolphin. Ella voted for happy narwhal. Ben likes a shark that's afraid of people. Very clever, Ben. Uh, Serena says sleepy squid. Also very clever. Uh, determined blobfish. A hermit crab that's artistic. An octopus. A pout pout fish. A joyful angler fish. Mm, confident shrimp. Oh, I like that. I like that. I locked this monster. Putnam says uh, chatty disco whale. Now, is there such thing as a disco whale, or is it your whale that likes to go to the disco? I also misread chatty as caddy, and caddy means like, you know, you take things a little bit too personally, you, you're, <laughs> you're judging people, you're gossiping. So I do like the idea of a caddy whale who goes to the disco. That could be pretty good too. Uh, sea lion, a hermit crab, octopus, happy, dolphin, goofy, shark, piranha, uh, a delightful kraken, a friendly octopus, uh, Nicholas says a bashful clam. Uh, Kaysen says a um, uh, Mosasaurus. It's an extinct carnivorous marine reptile. Um, you know what, Carson? I When I put these things out there, I better do my studying because kids like you are way smarter than I am. Uh, uh, Nate says a megalodon, a cuttlefish. Six-year-old says a sea dragon. The nine-year-old says athletic. Austin suggested a dragonfish, happy saw shark, a shy hammerhead shark, a scientific blue whale, a land shark uh, from my friend Max, octopus, uh, nar another narwhal, 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 uh, daughter says dolphins, a joyful jellyfish, a cranky crab, uh, a, a lobster, another narwhal, hammerhead shark, eel, and omega shark. Oh my goodness, those are, there are so many good ideas here. I wish I could choose every single one, but this would be a 10 hour video. Let me put this aside. Okay. Spoiler alert. We are later reading peanut butter and jellyfish. Now that crab at first, a uh, crab was a crabby. He's named crabby was a lobster. 
and the lobster was named Krabby. My editor thought that might confuse kids, so we changed it to a crab, but I've always loved uh, lobsters. Uh, I grew up in New England, I spent a lot of time on the coast of New England. Also, I am very partial to narwhals as well. The fourth book in the Platypus Police Squad series is called Never Say Narwhal. Yeah, I don't want to give away the mystery of the whole thing, uh, whether the narwhal is good or evil, but it does involve uh, a narwhal character there. Um, let's see. Well, there he is. There's that narwhal creature again. Okay, so I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for lobster. I'm gonna go for narwhal, and um, I think I'm gonna also go for octopus because an octopus is fun to draw. Okay, so. But they need personality traits. Somebody suggested athletic, and so let's draw um, let's draw an athletic octopus. So remember, I start by finding my shapes, and the reason why I chose uh, the the octopus to be athletic, thinking about all of the different things that that. Octopus could hold that it could be it could be playing tennis with itself maybe um, it could be pitching itself a, a, a baseball okay so one two three four five three more three more three more tentacles uh, let's see you know what a little little weight training right there. Little soccer ball right there. And then I'll figure out what that last one is. Okay, so let me get my... Oh, let's give this octopus a headband. Sweatband there. Super happy. A lot going on. There is the tennis racket. One of the tennis rackets. And here is another tennis racket. And there's a tennis ball. Let me get another color to show those. Remember those motion lines we talked about? And baseball bat. And then that baseball with the arm stretched back, getting ready for the pitch. One, two, three, four. Okay, oh, we're gonna be spinning a basketball up here. Let's see, some weight training going on over here. Soccer ball kicking over here. Some motion lines here. Oh, you know, I'm going to use the blue for the motion lines on that basketball. Let's do that. Basketball spinning around. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What was this one going to be? I can't remember. What was that one gonna be? Um, let's see, I'm gonna put some motion lines here on that bat. Um, what was, what was it gonna be? I can't remember. Um, uh, 
Let's see. Um, oh, you know what it could be? It's going to be a uh, ping pong. And, the, and he's just kind of hitting the ping pong up and down. Okay, so there is my athletic octopus. All right, now on to the lobster. Let's, let's focus on the lobster next. And let's see, what personality trait am I going to use? You know, I think it's going to be a really happy lobster. How about a lobster who's so... How about a lobster who's so jolly that uh, he's a, a stand-up comedian? So we'll draw, we'll draw a little, a brick wall behind a lot of comedians you see in stand-up comedy. Uh, they're in front of a brick wall for some reason. I don't know why that became a thing. Okay, so there's the brick wall behind the uh, lobster that's joyful. Our joyful stand-up comedian lobster just cracks a lot of jokes. Likes to share his joy despite the fact that he's a shellfish. He shares his joy. He doesn't keep it to himself just despite being shellfish. And that is why I need an editor for my jokes. That is why I am not a stand-up comedian, but an author who relies on editing. Okay, so there is our there is our stand-up comedian. Lobster. All right, what is up with those lobster traps? Okay, so uh, leaves us with the narwhal, and um, let's see what personality trait do I want to use for that narwhal? Um, indecisive. How about indecisive? Because I'm feeling so indecisive right now. Um, so how would we do that? Okay, let's draw. Let's find our shape. You know what? I didn't leave enough space for the tusk. I'm going to start over again. So we're going to put one fin on the hip. One fin like going like, hmm. And it's tricky because you would think with, you know, an actual uh, narwhal, you'd think the horn would be up here like you see in a unicorn, but it's actually more like, it's actually more like a nose. Okay, you know what? The, the, the narwhal is at a restaurant with a really extensive menu so this is this is a narwhal at the cheesecake factory and just cannot figure out just what to order because there are just way too many options when really you're just biding your time to get to the end of the meal, which is why you went to the Cheesecake Factory in the first place, which is to get cheesecake. I mean, that's, that's at least that's how I operate. Uh, 
And let's do uh, a little fish down here. That could be the waiter waiting to take down the, the order. Okay, so we have our indecisive narwhal, our first try at the narwhal, it didn't save enough space. We have our uh, joyful lobster, and we have our athletic octopus. That was so much fun. I hope that you get to brainstorming and collaborating with your family members to make some characters. Uh, let's check in. There's a good doggy, so go puggy doos, Ralph and Frank. Frank and Ralph. Ralph and Frank. Oh, nom, 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 nom. You know, one of my uh, favorite things to do on the show is to connect you, the viewer, with an author uh, that maybe you never heard of before. Maybe you kind of know a little bit about this author. Maybe you've heard something about the author. Uh, and, and I can elevate my colleagues in children's literature. And today I have an author that I think you're going to like. Um, I see a lot of potential. You know, you meet these authors and you, you think, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's some good people right there. Uh, they have some great ideas. I really think that they're going to do something with this. And so today I'm talking to this, this guy. Uh, his name is, is Jeff Kiney. Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff Kinney. And he has this book series that was called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And it's about this kid named Greg Hefley. And I think you're going to really dig these books. They're funny. Uh, they're told as journal entries from the main character with little cartoons. And, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff Kinney is a hard worker because he has this, this first book. Um, but he also, he's also been publishing several uh, sequels in, in the Wimpy Kid books. And uh, we here in the Krasowska house have taken a shining to the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. We think they're fun. We think they're funny. Uh, we highly recommend them. Uh, I think that uh, this Jeff Kinney guy is going to make something of himself. So um, let's hop on the old rotary phone and uh, let's meet Jeff Kinney. And we're going to connect through this uh, dial-up modem connected rotary payphone. Let's call Jeff Kinney. Jeff Kinney, my man. I... Jeff, are are you are you in your car? Hey, Jarrett, and hey, everyone. It's Jeff Kinney, author of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series, and I'm calling you from inside my car, and I cannot wait to teach you how to draw my characters. Well, all right, Jeff. Uh, why don't you show us how to draw Greg Heffley? We would love that. I'm about to give you what I can almost guarantee is going to be the strangest drawing lesson you'll get on Jarrett's program. Why? Well, first of all, I'm in my car. Uh, don't worry, I'm not driving. Here's the steering wheel. I'm actually in the passenger seat. But the reason it's really strange is because I'm in the cemetery. So look around here. You can see the cemetery. Why am I in a cemetery inside of a car? Well, it's because my house is a little bit crazy. It's too crowded. I can't work there. So every day, rain or shine, I come to the cemetery and I write and I draw. So I'm going to try this here. I've got an iPad. Let's see if I can get this going. Oh, first, let's take a look around my office. Okay. So we've got a blanket back there. If it gets too cold, I've got my coat. I've got some fuel. Kids, I do not recommend you fuel yourself on Starburst jelly beans, Oreo mega stuffs, or chips deluxe. They are very delicious, I know. However, not good brain fuel. Okay, I do all of my work on an iPad, so I'm gonna bring out my Apple Pencil, and let's see how this goes. Let's see if this works, all right? I know, you need to see my drawing tablet, not my face, so let's give this a try. I have no idea if you guys can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so I can flip this camera around. No, I can't. We're just going to wing it. Here we go. So, I do almost all my drawing on this this iPad right here. I probably should have put my glasses on so I could actually see this. 
So when I draw Greg Kepley, I always start with the eyes. And then I go to the nose. Now, Greg's head is almost a perfect circle, so... Oh, he's getting really wobbly already. Am I actually the artist behind Diary of a Wimpy Kid? You'll never know. It looks like I don't even know how to draw my own character. Here we go. Greg's got three hairs. He's got an ear. Wow, that was shaky. That's why you hit the undo button. Okay. And he's got an ear a little bit better now. Now, when I draw my cartoons, I try to draw with as few lines as possible because I think that cartooning is the art of simplicity. So I'm really trying to draw with as few lines as possible. I think that the best cartoonists don't use many lines at all. They get their point across with just a little bit. So let's see, Greg curves. He's kind of shaped like a banana, right? In fact, in Brazil, the book is called Diário de um Banana, which means Diary of a Banana. He's actually called the Banana Boy in Brazil, which I think is kind of cool. All right, simplicity rules and cartooning. So Greg's only got four fingers, really a thumb and three fingers, because that's kind of enough. A lot of great cartoon characters only have just a few fingers. All right, he's getting a little shaky here. Hopefully this is in the camera view. I'm not good at this social media stuff. Greg's leg curves out, right? It got a little wobbly there. All right, I'm pulling back. Here we go. And let's see, he's got a foot here. I told you this would be the weirdest drawing lesson you got. I'm gonna also guess that it's the worst drawing lesson you're gonna get because I'm just not the best artist, unfortunately. Here we go. And those are Greg's feet, and I'm gonna sign it just for fun. So I hope you guys will take this time, and I hope you guys will create your own cartoon characters. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of talent, just a little bit of inspiration. And Jarrett, thank you so much for having me on your program. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for showing us how you draw Greg Heffley. Everybody, check out the Wimpy Kid books. They're decent. Yeah, they're pretty good. And uh, so, uh, Jeff, uh, before you go, could you just real quick, could you just uh, text me a screenshot from your iPad of Greg Heffley so we could get, uh, uh, I could show the, the audience a better shot of that? Awesome, thanks. Check it out. Well, it's Friday, so we brainstormed. But also this is the time where I bring my three-year-old onto the YouTube show and just see what happens. Story time with oppositional three-year-old. Oh, no! Well, Formal Friday continues now with story time with oppositional three-year-old. This is our oppositional three-year-old Xavier. Yeah. Yes, and back by popular demand, Gina Krasowska. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I'm here because of my good friend Judy, who told me that my storytelling and reading um, helped her little boy relax. So, I'm and here by to now you're again. you're all sick of hearing from me. I know ah. they are. Okay, so today what are we gonna read, Xavier? Ready? Tell everybody. Tell everybody, what are we going to read? Peanut butter and jellyfish and crabby. Peanut butter and jellyfish and crabby. Yeah. So Gina will read while I draw. And in this book, and a lot of times in many books, it starts on the end papers. And these are the papers right at the beginning, the pages right at the beginning when you open the book. And you see here, there is a fisherman in a boat. And he's got a lobster trap. And here's the title page. And it's dedicated to my little girl, Lucy. Um, and that's Lucky. And a special thanks to Zoe, because Zoe helped with some of the art. And we'll show you that. Peanut butter and jellyfish were the best of friends. There's the clam. Watch out for the clam. best of friends who spent their days exploring up, down, around, and through their ocean, their grand ocean home. There's the 
Where's the where's the clam? Yeah, you found him. You found him. Unluckily for them though. He, there he is. There he is. They live Mommy, I wish he could swim up there. Yeah, yeah. I think he does too. They live near a crabby. You guys swim like humans. He would taunt as they slipped past. Peanut butter and jellyfish did their best to ignore the heckler. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear something? Asked jellyfish. No, must be the current, said peanut butter. Krabby was relentless. You guys smell like rat and barnacles. <laughs> mm. Yeah, P.U. Mm. My grandma called. She wants a run walk shoes back. You'll get that later in life. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen sea snails swim with more style. What a bunch of bobbleheads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing my bubble necklace for this book today. Yeah, bubble necklace. Yeah. Like it? Yeah. You can wear it? Yeah. Okay. Jellyfish puffed up his chest and said, Driftwood and sea stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. Where's the clam? Did you find the clam? There he is. You're an invertebrate. You don't even have any bones, huffed Krabby as he marched along his favorite rock by himself. Well, he doesn't have bones. No, no, because he's an invertebrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they have water in them. Mm-hmm, that's true. Yeah. One day, as peanut butter and jellyfish set out, set out on an excursion to the great reef. He's right there. He's right there. <laughs> they swam past Krabby's perch. They braced themselves for the usual insults, but all was quiet. Hmm. Mommy and Daddy get nervous when things in the house are quiet. I think they might get nervous too. Then they heard the faint sound of sobbing up ahead. <laughs> it was Krabby. He was caught in a lobster trap and it was being lifted to the surface. I'm scared, he cried. Surely he was doomed. Should we help? asked Jellyfish. The two friends shared a look. He's in serious trouble, said Peanut Butter. Well, he ate purple water. He in blue water. Mm, you're right, they changed colors. You're right, we have to help, exclaimed Jellyfish. But how? I have a plan, said Peanut Butter. Follow me. You always choose to be kind, right? Yeah. They swam up to the lobster trap. <gasps> Peanut Butter used his tail to unlock the trap's gate, but Krabby didn't budge. Come on, you're free, said Peanut Butter. But I can't swim, confessed Krabby, and I'm afraid of heights. The lobster trap was getting pulled closer, closer to the surface. Is this about where Zoe's little fingerprint is over there? Um, no, it's coming up. Okay, sorry. Her fingerprint is right, right in there. Okay. Plan B, exclaimed Jellyfish. He worked furiously on untying the trap's knot. Hurry, cried Peanut Butter. I can see the fishermen above. Just when all hope was lost, the knot gave out, sending the trap plummeting. Peanut butter and jellyfish grabbed a hold and lowered it to safety. Phew. Okay, excuse you. Krabby's <laughs> legs wobbled as he returned to his favorite rock. Thanks, you two, he stuttered. You know, I'm sorry for saying those mean things, Krabby said. Mom, he's orange like the pumpkins. He is orange like pumpkins. You got that right, buddy. You got that right. Um, he may have been afraid of heights, but Krabby was brave enough to apologize. 
I think gotta be a brave, brave person to apologize. Yeah. I guess I was jealous. You guys seems seem like you're always having so much fun exploring the open waters. Oh, yeah. oh there's a clam. Well, there's plenty to explore. Close to the ocean floor, said jellyfish. Peanut butter and jellyfish still swam up, down, around, and through. But it was on the ocean floor that they found their greatest treasure. What do you think their greatest treasure was? That treasure. Oh, yeah, well, gold is nice. But also, I think their friend Krabby, they're all their friendships and being kind to each other, right? And yes, there's the clam. And now we look at these end papers. And what do we see? What happens? There's no lobster trap. <laughs> that daddy, he's so clever. The Great end. reading. Oh, oh, look in the back cover. Look oh. in the back cover. Oh, there's more. What do you see? 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 His tail. His tail? Yeah. The clam. Xavier, would you like to draw a fish for us? Yeah. Okay. I bet we could put lots more colors to put all of the pretty sea creatures and plants. All Mama, would you like to draw? Oh, a, no. <laughs> Gina would, we got, you know what? We have lots of different colors to choose from. Let's see. We've got pink, we got blue, and we got green. <laughs> Everyone, let's see what Gina Krasowska is going to add to this drawing right over here. Can I draw on this page? Yeah. Oh, okay. What are you doing? I'm going to draw um, a fish. See, everyone can draw. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Grown-ups. Oh, he's not done yet. Oh, you're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> um, can I say goodbye to everybody while you finish? Xavier? Yeah. Okay, I can say goodbye. <laughs> so, uh, grown-ups, you can submit uh, your young artist work via my website, studiojjk.com. We celebrate as much art as we can at the end of every episode. Uh, we're going to start playing more and more music by some great uh, bands that are kindy bands. So, so kids' music that's independently produced uh, today. That was silly. So we have a great track from uh, Lucky Diaz and the family jam band they are just so much fun uh so so lucky and alicia alicia thank you so much for the gift of your music uh thank you for letting us uh play your your music uh, alongside this great art by our young viewers viewers uh check out lucky Diaz and the family jam band uh via their website please check out their music have a great dance party and in the meantime Everyone, keep drawing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Xavier, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Can you say bye? Can you say goodbye? Pumpkins? Goodbye? Bye. I'm Xavier. Say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> bye, everybody. Please click like and subscribe and keep drawing. See you soon. Why are you crying in bed? Are you awake, my dear?
So let's be thankful for another day in this year Cause it's more than we're promised and it's worth fighting for Cause I know that there's someone and they're worth fighting for